All coffee naturally contains a wide range of organic acids. These acids are an integral part of the flavor of brewed coffee. In this video, I will look at why coffee is acidic, how it affects the flavor, how different brewing methods influence the acidity, and finally, the health effects of acid in coffee. First, a little background on acids. According to the widely used Bronsted-Lowry theory, an acid is a substance that releases or donates a proton in a chemical reaction. Acids can be described as weak or strong depending on how readily they release these protons. A pH scale is used to describe the acidity or alkalinity of a solution, but for our purposes pH does not represent the perceived taste of acidity very well. There's also no clear way to define what an acid tastes like. While many taste sour or tart, others have different flavors or no flavor at all. As I mentioned before, coffee naturally contains many organic acids in varying concentrations. Let's take a look at a few of these acids. The most abundant and important acid in coffee is probably chlorogenic acid, or CGA. It is an ester, meaning two compounds combined between a carbon, double bonded to an oxygen, and another oxygen. In this case, quinic and caffeic acid. This particular configuration, also called an isomer, of chlorogenic acid is called 3O caffeoquinic acid, meaning the caffeic acid is attached to the third carbon of the quinic acid ring. This is the most prevalent isomer of CGA, although other isomers are also present in lower concentrations. Chlorogenic acid is responsible for much of coffee's tartness and contributes to sweet, sour, and astringent flavors. It is also believed to be responsible for complex, unpleasant flavors in coffee that is brewed too long. Chlorogenic acid readily breaks down into its constituents when heated, quinic and caffeic acid. Therefore, the longer coffee is roasted, the less CGA will be present while simpler acids will increase in concentration. These secondary acids are associated with excessive, unpleasant astringency in coffee. As this reaction is temperature dependent, an excessive amount of these byproducts are formed in coffee that is roasted too long. These compounds are not entirely undesirable, however, and may improve the taste when they are present in balance. They're also touted for promoting good health, including being anti-cancer, antioxidants, and inflammation inhibiting. Malic acid. Malic acid is prevalent in almost all living things, from the human body to birds to coffee trees. Malic acid is produced and consumed as part of metabolism. It contributes to the fruity flavors perceived in coffee, and is often associated with a green apple taste. The name malic comes from the Latin malum, in fact, meaning apple. While it is found in green coffee, its prevalence increases during roasting from the decomposition of more complex compounds. This occurs to a maximum point around a light roast, after which the amount of malic acid present decreases as the roast progresses. Citric acid. Citric acid is often the second to third most abundant acid in coffee, and like malic acid, it reaches a maximum concentration around a light roast and decreases with subsequently darker roasts. Its flavor contribution is generally considered positive, adding citrus fruit flavors and bright high notes. Other acids such as acetic, phosphoric, lactic, glucolic, and formic are present in lower but still significant concentrations. These compounds tend to increase in relative abundance as a roast progressively gets darker, potentially from the decomposition or other reactions between sugars and other acids. It is important to remember that while some generalizations can be made about the flavor contribution of these organic acids, coffee is a very complex amalgamation of many different kinds of compounds. And a good cup results from the balanced extraction of all of these elements. Acidity is very important, but only when it's in balance. How dark a coffee is roasted actually has only a minor effect on the total acids present in the final brewed cup of coffee, but it dramatically alters the relative abundance of these acids. The amazing research by Christina J. Burke, Rune, and others at the University of Southern Denmark, link in the description, is illustrated in their graph. These are concentrations of acids graft versus roast level. We can see chlorogenic acid decreasing after a light roast as it decomposes into quinic and caffeic acid. Citric and malic acids, likewise, are at their peak at a light roast, but then undergo thermal degradation or undergo reactions with other compounds present in coffee results in a lower measured concentration. These other acids, often associated with bitterness and astringency, increase in concentration as a roast gets darker. This leads to dark roasts still being quite acidic, but with different types of acids. This change in balance, from a light to a medium to a dark roast, dramatically changes the perceived acidity and taste. A light roast will have more of the fruity tasting complex acids, while a darker roast will feature more bitter acids. 
A medium roast usually has the lowest measured total organic acids and the lowest perceived acidity. How coffee is brewed can have a dramatic effect on the total acids in the final cup. Brewing method, time, and water temperature, among other factors, all influence how well acids make the journey from the coffee grounds to a brewed coffee. Generally speaking, acidity is increased or inversely decreased with finer grinding. Increasing the surface area with a finer grind will allow more water to contact the easily extracted organic acids. This way, adjusting grind can be an effective way to manipulate the acidity balance of coffee. Higher temperature. Higher water temperatures generally result in more efficient extraction, including the extraction of organic acids. Hotter water can dissolve and extract acids more readily. For example, cold brew works well for making relatively low acid coffee, although some acids are still extracted, resulting in a sour taste, especially if it is brewed too long. This leads me to longer extraction. Longer brewing times typically result in more extensive extraction, including the extraction of acids. Adjusting brewing time will affect the amount of acids, but also most other compounds equally. Once again, it is important to remember that good quality coffee is a result of balance. Overcompensating for acidity one way or the other can result in a compromised brew. Coffee from different regions can exhibit varying amounts of acidity due to a variety of factors, including environmental conditions, altitude, soil conditions, sunlight, and genetic variety. These factors influence the growth and development of coffee plants, affecting the chemical composition of the beans and ultimately contributing to differences in acidity. For example, caffeoliquinic acid, CQA, is synthesized by coffee trees and has a variety of functions. One of the primary functions of CQA in plants is as a secondary metabolite, which means that it's not directly involved in growth and development, but instead plays a role in defense against environmental stresses. It can help protect the plant from UV radiation, pathogens, and oxidation. This gives us a hint as to why different coffees contain different levels of these acids. Depending on the environment the coffee trees are grown in, they will have adapted to respond to different types and severity of environmental stresses. For example, a coffee grown at high altitude will contend with lower oxygen and more UV radiation than a tree grown at a lower elevation. While coffee is naturally acidic, it is generally not harmful to most people when consumed in moderation. However, some individuals with certain sensitivities, such as acid reflux, may experience adverse effects from the acid in coffee. Additionally, caffeine can irritate the lining of the stomach and increase the production of stomach acid. This can lead to symptoms such as heartburn, stomach discomfort, and acid reflux. So there we have it. Like many fruits, coffee is naturally acidic, and this acid contributes to the characteristic flavor of the bean. Depending on how the coffee is processed, roasted, and brewed, the acidity will be more or less pronounced. The general goal for a good cup of coffee is balancing acidity, sweetness, body, etc. The health effects of acidity in coffee can be pronounced in certain conditions, but it is generally not harmful. What do you think of the acidity in coffee? Do you try to find coffees with more pronounced or more muted acidity? How do you brew them? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching!